Ryan Noble standing by right now. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning. Hey, how's everybody in Utica doing? I haven't talked to you guys in a couple weeks. It I've has. seen all the pictures on uh, on social media. We drove through uh, last week uh, on on the throughway, and everything seems okay. Everybody driving out okay. I've well, definitely been in my thoughts. Uh, Brian, we're, we're, we're now we're back into yeah. a, a storm that they say is very similar to what hit a couple of weeks ago. So. Man. Uh, I mean, the last thing we need is more rain. And, uh, Ryan, I just want to say as well, uh, you know, I had a chance to be off last week, so I had CNN on, and I saw you a few times on television, and uh, you did a great job, and it was outstanding. That was actually, obviously, we talked to you every week, but I that was the first time I'd actually <laughs> seen you live. You were right outside the White House. Yeah. It was so cool, and uh, you did a great job, as always. Well, thanks, Jeff. I'm actually doing it. We're actually doing it. <laughs> yeah, you are. Ryan, I thought it was a lie. I thought it was another Keeler prank or something. Ryan, yeah. Ryan, <laughs> that's right. I bring people on that aren't real all the time. <laughs> Ryan, right. I, I mean, what's the... Listen, I got to say, are you going to get on because you're, you're, you're still looking young? This is the crime that exists <laughs> in your DNA. Uh, Ryan still looks like he's uh, he's young. He mm -hmm. hasn't aged an ounce at all. He hasn't aged at all. Let's uh, a little salt and pepper maybe for the hair. What do you think? We're gonna dye it. I actually, you know, my hair is is already naturally light, and and I can tell you that for the first time, just in the last month. And it could be with the arrival of a fourth child, but I am starting to find some gray specks in my hair. So wow. that is happening. All oh, right. boo-hoo. You can't really see it with the light-colored hair, but yeah. it's coming. All it's right. coming. Well, listen, in your story, sometime we should talk about your story, uh, your family story, because it's an amazing miracle. Um, yes, the, we're very blessed. Yes, the story yes. that, uh, that that Ryan and his uh, wife have, and we'll get to that sometime. Uh, but for now, um, what in the hell? Every time I turn around... <laughs> I'm like, this is bigger than ever. The House of Cards is boring compared to this. Well, you know, it's funny you mention House of Cards because uh, if you saw the New York Times story this morning, um, last night, Jim Shudor, our national security correspondent, put together kind of a, a who's who in this latest uh, Donald Trump drama, uh, Donald Trump Jr., who, who is this Russian lawyer, mm. who is the publicist, who is the pop star in Russia, and how are they all connected? And it was, uh, you know, kind of a, a graphic that showed the different ways all these people are connected. And there were White House officials that were quoted in the New York Times this morning that said that they, the, the visual reminded them of House of Cards. Yeah. And, and that's exactly the problem with this White House right now. And we've talked about it for a long time, is that with all this controversy surrounding them, it's just so hard to get anything else done. You know, the president just got back from a, a relatively successful trip overseas. He's heading back to France today. Uh, there are things that the White House feels that they're accomplishing, but, man, it's hard to, for any of that to break through when your son yeah, yeah. tweets out a four-page uh, email exchange where he explicitly accepts a meeting where he thinks he's getting some opposition research from somebody connected to the Russian government. So, uh, listen, um, he didn't do that on his own, right? Donald Trump Jr. didn't do yeah, it on his own? I, I'm asking. I mean, well, are we to believe that he just, uh, you know what, F screw it. I'm, they're gonna, New York Times is going to release it. I'm putting it out there. Do you think that's how it went, or is this a strategy of the White House? Well, if you believe the New York Times reporting, which I do, I mean, yeah. they, the New York Times was, was set to, uh, they'd already reported on the emails. They said yeah. they had three different people that seen the emails, and the New York Times was on the verge of publishing the emails themselves. They had it. To get out in front of the Literally story. Yeah. hours before they planned to do it, uh, Donald Trump Jr. Uh, yeah. put them out himself. So, I, I mean, I think that timeline holds pretty true. Yeah, yeah. But I think the broader question you're asking here is how coordinated is this effort through the White House and exactly what is their strategy here, both legal and from a yeah. public relations standpoint? And that is still a little bit murky. You know, the New York Times reported that the, the president himself and the White House actually – signed off on the initial plan, which, if you recall, the, the president's son stories changed about three different times yeah, over yeah. the past 48 hours. Um, but then this morning, his attorney was on about four different cable news shows, Jay Sekulow, and, and said that the White House didn't have any involvement. So I think that's, you know, I think that's one of the things that the special counsel is going to look into, because, yeah. you know, aside from this, you know, the email itself is not necessarily the smoking gun that topples the administration, but it is another kind of uh, piece of evidence that Robert Mueller is going to use yeah, as yeah. he tries to 
to frame some sort of uh, explanation as to uh, what role Russia played and how it may have been connected to the campaign. And Ryan, from a from a somebody uh, just from a, a constituent, uh, just from a, a citizen looking, um, yeah. when you're told uh, something is A, B, and C, and then it's uh, and then well, no, I'm going to change. Uh, I, here's what really happened, and then you hear uh, here's what really, and then the story changes again. You begin to wonder. So when the so when Don Trump Jr. says. My, I didn't tell my father. My father had no idea. Mm-hmm. I, I don't believe him. I, I, I don't. I don't believe anything at this point. Well, I mean, I, I think that's one of the fundamental problems with the White House right now. I mean, that there is a general lack of trust, uh, not just you know as it regards to Russia, but I mean, a, a number of different issues. I mean, I just give you an example that's not doesn't have anything to do with this, but is a an example of. Uh, we always get mixed signals from the White House. What exactly happened in the meeting with Vladimir Putin when he was in Germany? Right. Because the president tweeted one account of it. Rex Tillerson gave one account of it, and he was in the room during uh, his uh, press briefing after the fact. Steve Mnuchin, uh, one of his lead economic counselors, uh, gave his version of it, and they were all different. Yeah. So if you know, how are we to believe what comes out of the White House when even they can't get on the same page in ter- terms of what their overall message is. So yeah, yeah. This, it perfectly relates back to this situation because we get a different story on the role Russia played on, on an almost daily basis. And what the president ultimately tries to do is just, uh, you know, cast a big, huge shadow over the whole thing and say that it's just a witch hunt and everybody's out to yeah, get it. Yeah. And there's no truth behind it. Well, and that's frustrating. Uh, and and this is not media made. Um, these are all things that these are things that are coming from the White House. These are things that are coming from uh, Trump Jr. These are these aren't these aren't made up by the media. I want to play for you. This is where it begins to get a little touch and go. I think, and we talked about this maybe a, a couple of months ago. Nothing to worry about for this president until the Republicans start to worry. And, you know, you've got Lindsey Graham and John McCain who've been quite critical of the president all along. But now we're hearing from others. And let me just play uh, this from Republican Congressman Trey Gowdy. Someone close to the president needs to get everyone connected with that campaign in a room and say from the time you saw Dr. Zhivago until the moment <laughs> you until the moment you drank vodka with a guy named Boris, you list every single one of those and we're going to turn them over to the special counsel because this drip, drip, drip is undermining the credibility of this administration. Now, I know there's some funny in there, but there's frustration <laughs> there, too. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, and you, you know. That's Trey Gowdy. Trey Gowdy is the guy that uh, basically led the investigation into Hillary Clinton and Benghazi mm-hmm. for you know five or six years. So this is a guy who's conservative to the core and has generally been kind to the Trump administration. So if he is concerned about this, and I think what you see there from Trey Gowdy is not necessarily an indictment on the administration, but a, hey, guys, get your act together. Yeah, yeah. Get everybody in the <clears throat> same room and figure this out, because you know even if you didn't do anything wrong, the way that you're handling it makes it look awful, and it makes it look like you're hiding something. So, you know, get everything out on the table. Allow the investigation to play out so that there can be some sort of definitive, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, conclusion as to what exactly happened. You know, I talked to Marco Rubio yesterday, and it was just him and I in a hallway, and I asked him what he thought about this, and, you know, they aren't rushing to defend the president. He did say that he was glad that um, Donald Trump Jr. was being transparent about it, that he put the emails out but that he wants the investigation to move forward. And I think that Republicans on the Hill in particular are just so frustrated that the, the administration is making it so difficult for the truth to come out, yeah. and they just want to get past it because yeah, it's making yeah. so much everything else so difficult. I mean, imagine if this would have come out when this whole thing broke a couple of months ago. It would be over with by now, right? Maybe. I mean, I, I mean that, that, you know, Bill, keep this in mind. It wasn't until... The story came out about Barack Obama, you know, having the information about the Russian hack and not doing as much as he possibly could and having an official in the story say that they feel like they kind of bungled it. That was the first time that Donald Trump definitively admitted that Russia hacked or, you know, intervened in the U.S. election. He kind of. He, he kind of alluded to it on the margins for the past six months and then even blamed other people. That was the first time that was like, you know. Two weeks ago. Yeah. So you tell me, if, if he, even though 17 different intelligence agencies, Republicans on the Hill, 
you know, uh, across the board, everyone who's seen the, the evidence related to this has said definitively that Russia was involved and Putin himself was engineering the whole thing. But it took the President of the United States uh, to fully admit that he had to wait until there was some opportunity to blame Barack Obama. Yeah. So if he even can't even get to that kind of central point, how on earth can you assume that he's doing everything he can to contribute to a full vetting of the investigation? That's why I think it just makes it so difficult. It is uh, going to be interesting. Uh, I, I just uh, try to think back, uh, and two years down the road, we're looking back at all this. What are we going to be? Where are we going to be? And I'm not sure there's anyone right now that can tell you definitively, oh, I know where we're going to be. We, no. Have, we yeah. have no idea. And the other thing I should point out, Bill, is that while we are talking about all of this, and, you're no, and I don't think there's no doubt that we're in the midst of a historic uh, event that you know will probably be in history books somewhere down the road, yeah. at the same time this is happening, there is an enormous debate happening about the future of health care, mm-hmm. which impacts every single American on some level. And that's what the lion's share of my day yesterday was spent working on health care and trying to find out exactly what's going to happen with health care. And you did not see that story told very much anywhere yesterday yeah, yeah. because of all these headlines that were being dominated on Russia. So you have enormous issues being debated in the halls of Congress and in the White House that aren't getting any attention because of this huge scandal. And it is a scandal. John McCain himself described it yesterday as a classic scandal. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that's a disservice to the American people. So no matter what the end of this investigation turns out, the fact that it has made everything else in Washington grind to a halt is impacting people on a very direct level every single day. Uh, And I think that's what's frustrating a lot of people. I don't think that, uh, based on, on everything we know, I don't think Donald Trump Jr. broke the law. But what he is doing is he's breaking the back. Uh, this this could very well be the straw that broke the camel's back. And what I'm talking about is the trust that Republicans in Congress have for this president. And what you can't have is we're going to start we're going to start to be thinking about midterms here. We're already thinking about midterms. <laughs> we're, we're already we're already yeah. we're, con- uh, candidates announced here. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. At what point do they walk away from this president and then he's on his own? And that's not going to be a good place. That's definitely true. I mean, you guys will have one of the most heated races, I think, where this particular issue is going to be debated. Yeah. You know, the, I mean, the president, even though his name won't be on the ballot, he will be the central the topic that will be up for debate in every single congressional race across the country, including the one that you guys have there in Utica. And it's going to happen all over the country. And there's no doubt that, you know, the future of his presidency could potentially hang on those midterm elections, because if Republicans can't hold on to the House, that's when you have to concern yourself with the specter of impeachment. Yeah. And that's when, if, he, if you think life's difficult for him now, then it'll be impossible if the Republicans don't hold on to the House in 2018. Uh, Ryan Nobles is a Washington correspondent uh, for CNN, and uh, always appreciate it, Ryan. We'll be watching for you, and uh, talk to you again next week. Great, guys. Have a great right. week. Thanks, man. Um, and I, I have to say that I know I, I keep getting messages of oh, Ryan's liberal. Ryan's a, no, no, he's not. Um, Ryan is uh, he's independent person is personal politics. Um, he is n- not even close to uh, liberal just to let you know uh, he's reporting on what he's discovering. And I got to tell you, it's it's uh, pretty scary right now.